Hello YouTube, Napster's Gear here. Have you ever played with one of these? These are geared DC motors that are usually found in Arduino kits used for robotics projects. When you buy them, they often come with a wheel and a tire so that they can be readily used for robotic car projects which require forward movement. They can also be used for less complicated car-like projects in the makerspace like these that were made by young kids. However, sometimes you just need something that pushes and pulls repeatedly. Today, I'm going to show you how I used Tinkercad to design and model a geared DC motor arm which acts and looks like a server arm. First of all, I logged into my Tinkercad account, then created a new design entitled Geared Motor Servo Arm. Then I clicked on the Shapes drop down menu and chose All Shape Generators. I scrolled through the available shapes to look for the circular trapezoid shape, which I then dragged onto my workspace. I had to rotate the newly created shape because the dialog box of that shape first the bottom as the top and then the top as the bottom. I changed the top radius to 3.5 or make it 3mm and the bottom radius to 5mm. See where the changes happen in the shape when I change the values in the dialog box. 3mm for the top radius to look too wide so I just made it 2.5mm. I then increased the length of the arm to 30mm. I rotated the view a little so I can see the side of the shape. Then I changed the height of the shape to 2.4mm. I think that thickness is good enough for the intended projects that I will use the arm with. Then I created the part that will screw onto the geared DC motor shaft. I used the cylinder shape and changed the diameter to 10mm by changing both the width and length to 10mm. I used the center and bottom align tool to align the arm to the cylinder together. I changed the height of the cylinder to 6mm. These dimensions are just based on estimates that I made in my head while thinking of the potential uses of the arm. Next, I designed the hole that the motor shaft will go through. The shaft's diameter is roughly 5.5mm. I used the cylinder shape to create the hole. Then I used a diameter of 6.2mm which gives me a lot of allowance just in case I need it. And since the shaft has flat sides, I added some hole squares which I grouped with the cylinder so that we can get the shape of the shaft. I then changed the shape from solid to hole. This hole was then center aligned to the arm and middle aligned to the cylinder. I rotated the view once again so I can see the side of the arm. I moved up the hole by 1mm so that 1mm will be retained where the screw should be. I grouped everything together so I can better visualize the entire arm assembly. Then, I made a hole where the screw will go through. I think my screws are 2mm in diameter. So I used 2.2mm so that there will be some allowance when I print it. Then I aligned and grouped the screw hole to the arm. Then I made holes for the push rods that I will use. The push rods that I will use are 1mm thick. So I used 1.2mm to also have some allowance and some freedom to move. I pressed Command D on my Mac or Control D if you are on Windows or Linux to duplicate the hole. Then I moved the duplicate hole. I was just eyeballing the spacing at this point. Then I pressed Command D again. Tinkercad has a feature wherein it duplicates the previous movement and the actual shape when the duplicate command is preceded by a movement. I kept on pressing Command D until I had the number of holes that I wanted. I wanted to move the last hole away from the tip of the arm, so instead of selecting each hole one by one so I can move them, I just moved the arm until I was satisfied with the hole placement. Again, I'm just eyeballing this. Then I grouped the arm together with the holes. I rotated the view so that I can see all sides. When I knew that I was happy with the design, I exported the shape into STL so that I can prepare the 3D model for printing. 
Well, I hope you learned something today. Thanks for watching.